What's up guys? Okay, so now we're going to add, um, we're gonna add in the segments here, the colored segments, just to make it look like when the ground is going by, it actually looks like something is passing by. Cause like with a, with a brown ground, you can't actually see anything moving because it's just a brown blob. So here we're going to use a for loop to just populate our ground with the 20 segments we designated here. So I'm gonna say for var i equals zero, i is less than the number of segments. So we're gonna create um, the number of segments on here of blocks. And now I'm gonna say var segment color, UI color, exclamation mark. And this exclamation mark just indicates that we're going to, we are going to initialize the segment color later in the code. Um, and we're kind of just promising that we're going to do that at some point. So then I'm gonna say if I modulus two equals zero, we want segment color to equal color one. Otherwise, segment color equal color two. And um, this modulus operator right here, anytime you do modulus two, that's basically saying, okay, well, if this is equal to zero, it's gonna be even, and if not, it's going to be odd. So this will get us half even, half odd. And now we're going to create our segments. So we're gonna say let segment equal SK sprite node. Um, we're gonna set its color to the segment color and its size to CG size make. Um, so for our width, we want it to be the width of our entire ground class divided by the number of segments because that will get us an even number of widths and then that will fit all the segments within our ground. So we're gonna, I'm gonna say self.size.width over um, number of segments. And you'll notice this is gonna give us an error. Um, the reason is because number of segments is actually an int and the value for width is supposed to be a CG float as you can see here. So what we're gonna do to fix this issue is we're just gonna cast this to a CG float and that will fix, a, fix our issue really easy. You'd have to make sure all the types are correct here. And we'll do the, right here, we're gonna say self.size.height for our segment. So that'll just get us a segment that's the height of our ground. For this segment, we're actually gonna set the anchor point again, just to make it easier. You're gonna see why this is gonna make it so much easier. Um, it's just a sec. I'm gonna set it to zero, 0 0.5. And so right here is where you're gonna um, kind of see where, why, I'm set, why I'm setting the anchor points to where they are. Right now I'm gonna set the position of the segment. I'm gonna say segment.position equals CG point make. And I'm gonna set it to CG float I. So just convert I to a CG float times segment.size.width. Now, the reason I'm doing this is this is going to make it so that every consecutive segment is going to move over a, um, an X value that is equal to the width of that segment. So that's going to go across the line. It's going to create a nice evenly distributed ground that has differing colors at every single segment along the way. And um, the reason, because if we had done, um, the reason that the anchor point is important here, the reason that it's at zero, 0 0.5 is if, it, is if it were in the center, we'd have to correct for that center positioning. So I would have had to do um, CG float I times segment.size.width minus half the width of our original segment. And this just makes it easier. So um, just easier, cleaner, better to do it that way. And for a Y value, it's gonna be zero. And then we're going to add child our segment here. So now let's run this, see if we did everything right here. Cross our fingers and Looks like something's going on here. So let's figure out what's going on. So um, first off, I need to, um, oh, okay, this is, <laughs> well, first off, let's just change this. Okay, color one, it should be color two. So now when you run this, at least you're gonna see that there are differing colors along the ground here, and that's what we want. However, we have to now position the ML moving ground within our scene. So because the anchor point of our ground we set to 0, 0, 0.5, it's positioning along that node. So 
for position, we're going to actually say instead of the view.center, we're going to set it to um, an x value of 0 and a y value of view.frame.size.height over 2. And this will get us back into that same position that we originally wanted. So awesome. Now we have, um, we have a good ground. It's set up. But now we need to start and make this thing move. So we're going to do something um, interesting with this SK sprite node. I'm going to try to get this in within this video just because I want you guys to actually start doing stuff like something that's interesting because I know how easy it can be to kind of feel like you're not accomplishing much while you're coding. So right here, we're going to create a function called start. It's going to be a pretty simple function. And we're going to say let move left equal sk action. I'll describe this in a sec. Dot move by x um, minus frame dot size dot width over two zero duration of one point zero. So sk action is what SpriteKit uses to kind of apply most actions to any any node within your scene. So you can make things grow, shrink, disappear, appear, move. And there's a lot of different things you can look up here. If you guys want to look into this, you can always check the Apple documentation. And you really, um, if you're going to start be, like kind of developing on iOS more, you're going to get very friendly with this thing called um, the API reference. And you can get that and access that through help at the top and documentation and API reference. And I would highly suggest you kind of just take a look through that and get comfortable with it. It, it is a lot of stuff. So, um, when you are looking at it, you want to look for something specific like SK action, for instance. So this method in particular just moves a sprite node or a node by a given value. And we want to move it by half of the width of the ground. Remember, we made the ground two times, two times the width to compensate for this. This will just give us the illusion that the ground is moving to the left. So now that we've created our, um, our move left action, we actually have to run it. So I'm going to say run action, move left, completion, nil no, for now, just to kind of, um, we just want to kind of get it moving just to make something interesting here. So let's go back into our game scene.swit file. When in our touches began method, just to test this out, we want to make the ground start moving left. And we can't, at this point, we can't actually access our ground node because we initialized it in our did move to view method and we haven't made the ground global yet. So let's do that now. So we're going to say var moving ground, moving ground, exclamation mark. This will at least give us um, ML moving ground. This will give us access to the moving ground if we first let's for if we initialize it in this method, we will still be able to access it outside in a different function here. So I'm just going to change some of the values here. And I'm going to say moving ground dot start. And this is just going to call the function that we just created. And let's see, um, let's see what happens when we do that. So if we click right here, you're going to see perfect. So at least we have it moving. Um, we don't have it repeating yet. And um, Let's actually, yeah, let's do that right now because it's actually a pretty simple thing to kind of make this ground repeat over and over again. So let's go into our Emma moving ground class. And right here, we're going to create another action. And this action is going to be the action that moves the ground back to its original position. So we're going to call this reset position. It's going to be a constant because we're not going to change it. Okay, sk action move 2x 0 in a duration of 0. So that's just going to make it teleport back to its original location of x equals 0. Now to put these two actions in sequence, we're going to create a um, sk action sequence. And to do that, we're going to say let move sequence equal sk action dot sequence. And now we're going to create the array of actions that make up our sequence. And this is really simple. Um, to create the array, you just put these two brackets here and you put in your sequence, uh, sequence of actions. I really like SK action because 
um, it, it's really powerful. Like there's a lot you can do and it actually is, it's pretty simple as far as programming goes. So um, I highly encourage you guys to kind of experiment and mess around with SK action. So here I'm gonna say um, move sequence instead of that move left. And on completion, we actually want this method to restart itself. So um, actually on second thought, I just thought of a way better way to do this. In my, in my original code, I was actually, I was just having a completion block where I, here I'll actually show you. Um, let's say run action move sequence. So this is what I was doing in the original code and what I was going to do at first. Um, I just kind of called the method again, and this would call that run action again. Um, what you can do instead is you can actually repeat an action indefinitely. So I'm going to say run action, move sequence, um, or sk action dot repeat action forever right here, move sequence. That's way better, way cleaner. So. I'm just going to delete this. This repeat action forever just repeats the action forever on the given node that the action is running. And um, yeah, I like that a lot more. So let's run this, let's see what's going on. Now if we click on it, you're gonna see that we have a moving ground and it's moving indefinitely. It will keep doing that um, until you close out of this window and Awesome, now we have something interesting going on. And in the next videos, we're gonna add the hero, um, kind of start working on the hero.